What is meant to think? Thinking or thought is the process of using one's mind to consider or reason about something. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. What is vision? Vision is a clear mental image. So you have to imagine that. A clear mental image of a preferable future imparted by God and is based upon an accurate understanding of God and yourself and of your circumstances. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You might be familiar with this verse. When God said, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, he was referring to the fact that his thoughts transcend human thoughts. I, when, I, when I look at that, I think about the opportunity when Pastor asked me to, to do a message today. Around the same time, I teach at Area College. I teach two courses, family violence and, and, and social policy. The dean asked me to do uh, uh, introductory to psychology. He said, you know, the study of the human mind. And he knows who I am and what I stand for. I said, but, you know, Dean, I prefer you would ask me to do a study on the mind of Christ. And we know I asked it. He went on to talk about the human mind, oh, the natural mind. And I talked about the supernatural mind. So I thank God for the opportunity to stand here and do the supernatural mind today and the mind of Christ today. But I still do teach the course, though. But I have the opportunity here today to, to do that. God does not mean that we are incapable of receiving impartation for, from him. He has shared his thoughts. God has shared his thoughts with us through his word or his plans in his word. And this is the major revelation or testimony from God to us. Right? Brother William, let me, let me support that with scripture. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear and answer you. Then you will seek me, inquire for and require me as a vital necessity and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I have to contain myself and get this shocking stuff. That's a run up and down the aisle Pentecostal kind of shocking stuff. I'm telling you now. Because God said, This is what I think about you. See, God did this. This is what I think about you. That's what He said. Our minds can and should be filled with the thoughts of God. That's the thoughts of God. You know, our prayer for jobs, our prayer for family uh, unity, our prayer for. Uh, uh, no chaos in our situation or being able to deal with the chaos or having the responsibility, the ability to respond. Our thoughts should be filled with God thoughts and of his word to meditate on. There are no scriptures about that, right? To think about, to suppose or assume or imagining yourself as a recipient of what God says about you. Imagine yourself just for 10 seconds of what God said about you and what you shall receive. All your needs will be supplied. No weapon form to get you a prosper. You have a head and not a tail, a limiter and not a bar. If an enemy come at you one way, he'll please seven. This is what God said. Imagine that for a couple minutes. Of a couple seconds. Have you got to move on? Imagine that. Imagine that. You demand God aid. However, until you are born again, and filled with the Holy Spirit, as it says in Acts 2, 38 and 39. I'm not going to read that, but it's Acts 2, 38 and 39. Until you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't possess the mind of Christ. Right. You can't possess the mind of Christ. So everything I'm saying, it might sound, it's, it's great, it's good, and it's the truth. But unless you possess the mind of Christ by being born again, and being born again, you can look at your Bibles, and Romans 10, 8, 9. If we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died and rose again, you shall be saved. It didn't say if you had a certain amount of hair on your head. It didn't say if you didn't have a tattoo. It didn't say, don't say that. Amen. It don't say that. It didn't say if you wear a suit to church, you'll be saved. It don't say that. It don't say that. It's a, I'm serious. So we get tied up with all that tradition stuff. That's a whole other subject. I'm 
I just need to say that. It said, if you confess with your mouth, Amen. and you believe in your heart, Amen. and you drop a cattle, you know, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> they don't say that. Our vision must grow out of biblical principles. Being Christ-minded, needless to say, our vision must be tied up and consistent with the Word of God. That's right. Yeah. All right? See, I can, I, can, I can imagine some stuff. In, in, my, in my sinful nature, in, in, in the way I used to run back in the day, I can imagine some stuff. And I can still out of it too. But according to the Word of God, the way of sin is death. Spiritual death. Separation from God and Tired of that. I got tired of that. Okay? So I'm here to tell you today, no matter what you did. See, I'm not I'm getting on my head and all that. I'm not here to tell you about that. But believe me, I got a story to tell you. I got a story to tell you. I got a story to tell you. We're we'll talking about street stuff. We're we'll talking about prostitution and drugs. We're we'll talk. I can tell you some stuff. That's why when you see me saying amen and shouting, I know what God delivered me from. And guess what? Two things. If he can do it for me, <laughs> he can definitely do it for you. And here's another thing. If the devil didn't get me there, he ain't, he ain't got a chance. 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 He ain't got a Okay. Moving, thinking, imagining from God principles, that's where you get that smile. That's where you get that smile. See, because God's word said be anxious for nothing. God's word said any weapon formed against you will prosper. He said his word, I think it's uh, Proverbs 16, 7. When a man weighs, please the Lord. Or, or a person weighs, please the Lord. But let me go to uh, Hebrews 6 really quick. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He just told you how to please him. But in, in Proverbs said, when a man weighs, please the Lord. Have faith in Jesus Christ and working it on the cross. Don't ask to look at my bank 
next day. Dang. <laughs> but I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> the, the ability of the mind to be creative or resourceful. I'm a social worker by profession, and one of the things that I pride myself on, praise God, is being the most resourceful person I know. Housing? Okay. Resources. Uh, treatment? Okay. Resources. To imagine, to suppose or assume, and one's thinking to form a mental image or concept of something that is without form, or that is without, that's void, that's empty. Gregory, <coughs> Grandma Horsha. The Grandma Horsha is going to read from Genesis, right? Yes. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Praise God. So, God had to think of that. I'm going to create this. Here's what I, another thing I get out of this, and it's, it's a little bit of a subject, but God, see, with God living within us, we have the power to move, and where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty, what the Bible says. Well, here's what God did. He stepped into something that wasn't even shaped up. He stepped into something that was totally empty and darkness was gone. And he said, get out of the way. Light. That's what he said. He stepped into the chaos. You know, yeah, yeah, like a couple of years ago, he had to step into the folder of all that dead okay? And deal with it. Got to step into the children of uh, needing to increase their academic standards because they might be slipping. I need to step into it. That's what recovery is all about. But that's my story. That, that's, that I won't talk about right now. You got to step into that chaos, in that darkness, in that thing that does not have any form, that had the um, uh, imagine, imaginative, creative ability that God gave you to speak that word. Amen. Speak that word over your children. Speak that word over your, your family and your, your spouse. Speak that word over your job. Speak that word over your situation. Speak to situation and you can change it and that's what God and the Holy Spirit dwelling in you empowers you to do. It's not what you the Holy Spirit. That's what it wants to do. That's what it wants to do. In other words, the imagination does not observe or analyze what's there. Paul talks about walking by faith and not by sight. It imagines what it is not seen but might be there and explain what is there. Or our imagination is a new way of saying what is there that no one else has said before, Gabby. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gave life to the dead and calls things that are not as they were. Wow. Gave life to the dead. Gave life to the dead relationship. Gave life to the dead possibilities. Spoke things that wasn't as though it were. That's what it said. Imagine that. My purpose here today is to remind you of how your creative imagination can and should be filled with the thoughts of God and His Word from a God-given creative imagination, the mind of Christ. Okay? It can produce incredibly marvelous and wondrous works for you. But many times in the Christian community, our own misunderstanding of the word imagination, equating it solely with worldly views and the devil and all that kind of stuff. God has a mind. That's why people talk about the mind. What are you talking about then? God has a mind. He has thought. He can speak things that's not as though they were. The importance of how we imagine God, the hindrance that block our God-given ability to imagine and using the mind that God gave us in a sanctified way. I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit. Next slide. Where are we ready? The mind of God, he has thoughts. Imagine that. Let's roll. We're going to run through these scriptures. Michael. If you fully obey the Lord and God, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all of his commandments, I give you today the Lord, your God, who set you high above all nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you is if you obey the Lord your God. Okay, praise God. That's what God thinks. 